Hello folks and welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. Today's been sort of a field trip for me and Bo the Aqua Trigger will be with me on this dig. We are a long ways from home. This is my childhood home and right behind me here you're going to see a plaque honoring my fourth great grandfather. His name was Joshua Jones. Shortly after the Revolutionary War he was given a track of land I believe it was around 400 acres for his service in the war, and he hailed from Bucks County, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. He was uh, there at the Battle of Trenton. His 400 acres is right up this road. The detection will not occur on his original homestead. It's up here. Hopefully that'll be another dig for another day. It is through him that I am a member of the Sons of the American Revolution. This started my journey into the history detection that I do. It was researching my family's history and coming into contact with this patriot ancestor and uh, trying to find out where, how my patriot, how my ancestors ended up here. And this is it. The Thetis were Huguenots who fled France in the late 1600s for Austria and later to Quebec, Canada. From here in the mid-1700s, they would be found in Princeton, New Jersey, where my Patriot family story in America begins. My Patriot grandfathers, George Fetty and Joshua Jones, are inextricably linked through their service in the Revolutionary War. George Fetty was a member of the New Jersey Militia, and Joshua Jones was with the Berks County, Pennsylvania Militia, and both would be linked to the Battle of Trenton in 1777 under the leadership of George Washington. It is not entirely known what would bring them both to the western frontier of Pennsylvania, notably Greene County. During this time, in the late 1700s, the land they settled was once in Greene County, PA. But during the survey of the Mason-Dixon line in 1767, Greene County was split, with land south of it going to the county of Monongahela in Virginia. Monongahela County would split in 1842 into Marion County, Virginia. And finally, in 1863, when 55 Virginia counties ceded from Virginia to form West Virginia, as a result of the Civil War, the family farm had now passed into three states and three counties without moving an inch. George Fetty's grandson, John D. Fetty, was my second great-grandfather and would build his cabin on land adjoining the Jones. My great-grandmother, Minnie, would share and relate stories of her childhood, being raised in this cabin by her father, John, and wife, Arcerilla, who would read the children's stories from the Bible in front of the fireplace. My great-grandma would marry Sidney Jones. 
grandson of the patriot Joshua Jones, who lived and farmed land with the Fetties. It was here, at a young age of 46, that he would see tragedy and die due to an accident involving his team of horses being spooked while raking hay in the field below the cabin in this episode. In this episode, I am joined by the Aqua Chigger as we explore my family's cabin and search for artifacts related to my family. Stay tuned. Hello, folks. Welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. We are on site, and this is my family's farm. And it's a big, sizable farm, and we are coming up to the first log house. It's going to be here on the left. And this was a Jones house. So he was the second or third generation from the Revolutionary War Patriot. And I don't think we're going to be able to get in there on this house. So we got a couple houses up here. But this one looks like it is not doable. Right there on the right. Let me get down here. Right there on the right was the kitchen. The detached kitchen. And there was the main part of the house. There were stairs that went up to the top there. This used to be a gorgeous log house. Really not even 20 years ago. And there was a porch right over there. And uh, man, it is all grown up. It never used to be this way. But it is this way now. The chickens oh. with us. So here's the front end of the. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but that's this was the kitchen here. And uh, when I was a kid, it actually had a wood shingled roof. Still. Okay. We're gonna walk up this road, and we're gonna go to my great great grandparents' house. All right, folks, we have arrived, and this house here goes back at least three generations of my family of great greats and here it is this is it still standing we don't know when it was built so part of the challenge here part of the i guess yeah part of the challenge is i want to date this place uh, we know that my great great grandma lived here my great grandma was born here and uh, she always told us stories of being educated by the firelight there by the fireplace and uh, her mom would read her from the family Bible because that was, you know, basically her education. Um, I'll take you around the house. I'll take you inside the house. Um, I'm going to show the chig here some places around the house here that uh, I know about that she told me about. We're going to check those places out too. And I would like to find some artifacts that can help period date this house. It's dovetail notch. It tells me it's past 1840. Um, I think it's actually post-Civil War. That's what I think. Um, but I don't know that, and hopefully we're going to find that out today, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, now, this land, my Patriot, Revolutionary Patriot Grandfather's property is not very far from here. And uh, his son, grandson, and his own great-grandson, so three generations of my Patriot Grandfathers, lived right here, right here on this land. So we could find, it's, theor, it's not out of the realm of possibility, we could find Revolutionary War artifacts here, or Civil War artifacts here, or World War I artifacts here. We could find all of that here. So I'm glad you guys are here on this journey with us. I'm glad you're walking these footsteps with us, and I hope we have a really great day today. We will. We will. We will. Okay, we're going to get started here, and I am going to start right here in the front yard. This is what was the front yard then. So I'm going to detect out here first. And I am going to put it on Pro Zero. I'm going to bump up the iron to scrim because I honestly can already hear a lot of chatter in the ground. So I'm going to put it up to 25. I'm down to one bar of my battery. I don't have a lot of battery left, but I'm going to use it until they're done. I got new batteries. So let's just see what oh. 
right. There's a 44 50 right there. So we're going to dig that up. Now, I will tell you, my uncle and cousins and everybody hunt up here. And the reason we're up here this weekend is because opening deer season is actually happened yesterday. Um, turkey season yesterday. Deer season's coming up. We want to get in here before the hunters get in here. So we might actually find a lot of rifle shells and shotgun shells. But our, here's a mid-tone. Let's go ahead. We're going to dig that up. Might be a button. Right there. Out. Whatever it is, it's right here. Let me pull you guys a little closer. It's right here. Let me pull up here. You can see it. Pull this out of the ground, out of that hole. The bottom is concave. Don't know what that is. I don't know if it's remnants from a bullet. I believe it's a part of an old rivet, but I don't know. I uh, I think actually, I know what this is. I think this is a piece of lead. That was on top of a nail that would go on a roof. I think that's what that is. This is where the nail head was, and they put lead on top of it to keep it from rusting. You think that might be what it is? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's keep going. All right. Might be iron. See how that is? All right, let's take a look at that. I see it right there. It is a 22 shell casing. Okay. I just pulled this out of the ground. Now it doesn't look... Oops, let me pull up here. It's probably not that old. Because it's got... You know, it's, it's got the screw in there. But look at that. Isn't that fancy? It's a, it's a, you know, it's a lid to a drain cock or something like that. And I am literally on the edge of the house. So right here is the house. And I haven't been showing you, but what I've been finding mostly is mason jar lids. So I just stuck them right there. Uh, this so far is one of the only non-ferrous items I've found so far. So, found this hole and there's probably more in here. Come right here against the house, and I got a good hit right there. It's a 67, so it could be a rifle shell. Don't know. Let's pull this back. Let's pull this back. I think it's probably a piece of china right here. No piece of china, maybe a little bowl. You see the curvature right there? But there's something in here. Let's see what that is. It's a button or a coin. Oh, this is a great find. It is a button or a coin. I think it's a coin. So, yeah, I found a coin. It is a wheat scent right there. See, it says one cent right there. Let me pull up here. It says one cent. Let's see if I can get a date on this thing. 1919. Oh, it's, it's, it's chewy. is right in here it's a brass buckle don't know how old it is i mean it's got a iron pin but it's brass nonetheless that's a nice little fine man yeah yeah i'll take it awesome yeah i'll sweet. take it but it sounded good too didn't yeah it? it sounded real good I, i'll nice. rather dig these in bullets
Okay, we're gonna walk around a little bit, let you see. Now this was always the bad part here because there is a door that goes in and there was a window there. And that window, unfortunately, you can see the upstairs rafters. I'll take you in there. It is safe, they've got it propped up. So many memories here for me as a child and so many stories that I heard about this place. My great grandma said that she would sit her her mother would be my great great grandmother would sit there in a rocking chair and rock and read them the family Bible as they sat around the fire right here. All right, I pulled this out of this hole and I'm actually excited to find this. Of course, you can see it's broke. It's been binged, banged up and dinged on and everything else. But wow, look at that. And this, no doubt in my mind, my grandpa, my great grandpa, or my great great grandpa has used this. And uh, it's right off the porch here, right off the porch. So they probably use this for kindling wood for their fireplace. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Oh, man, that is awesome. I'm really happy about that. That's an artifact. And that's an artifact associated with my family. All right, let's keep going. All right, Mr. Aqua Tricky, you can tell me what this is. I know it's probably to a pan, but it feels copper, and it is copper. You can see the copper right there. It's a different kind of handle on it. It's just a big piece of copper, and there's some rivets right there. Oh, it's copper bucket. Copper bucket. Copper bucket. Yeah. Good signal? Great signal. I, I, can I see it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of cool. A lot of times you just find this part here, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's a big copper, uh, copper bucket or a pail. Yeah. Huh. Those are, you know, the, just the metal in it's kind of valuable, so you don't normally find it because people wouldn't, you know, would keep it. Yeah, it's pretty. It's got the patina all over yeah. it. Um, it's going to look good on your wall in your house. Main room when you, as soon as you walk in. I can, I can tell you my wife would look at that and she'd be like, what is that from? What are you planning on doing with that? Throw it, right? Where are you going to put that? <laughs> Actually, pretty cool. I like it, man. Hey, might have been full of gold coins. So look around there. Yeah. For me, it's it's my grandparents and my great grandparents. I mean, they held this stuff. They did. So it's not just someone else's story. It's my story. Right. So on your wall. On my wall. Just like that little hatchet is. Todd. It's melted lead. It is melted lead. I have no idea what it went to, but that's what that is. Melted lead. All right. Yeah, I don't see it. You guys see it? 
See it in there? I don't see it. Is that a mason jar lid? Is that it? Yep, that's reading an 82. I don't know what that is. So we'll uh we'll put it in the bag and we'll keep going. But it might be this might be a piece of big piece of lead. Okay. It is in this hole right here. Oh we got a coin. We got a coin. Maybe. We got an old coin. It's crusty. I don't know how old it is. It looks like a quarter. That's a Washington. Mm. Yeah. I can't see a date on that. But I don't think it's that old. As you can see the eagle on the back. I'll clean that up. Let's see what year that is. All right, the aqua chigger and I were talking on our little lunch break here, and uh, Bo and I. Actually, Bo made some observations and he brought it to my attention and I agree with him. And I want to show you some things that we have observed. And uh, now I know for a fact my great-grandma and my great-great-grandparents lived in this house. The question has always been, when was it built? And uh, we think the cabin is actually repurposed from an older or earlier or another building and another cabin and I'll show you why. See how this sticks out further than the edge right there? It sticks out further. And look at this. This this is kind of sloppy work. I mean, look how wide this is. This this here notch was cut for a wider log. And uh th that you would never see that kind of craftsmanship on a log that was originally cut and you can see here same kind of deal see how this is how wide this is in uh there all up through there i also wanted to point out if you guys can see this is the logs from the second level down are a different kind of log we think these are i believe are poplar those are poplar and when you get up above, it's a different kind of log. And the chinking and everything is completely different up there. And you can really get to notice it right over here. I'll bring you guys right over here. Okay. Okay, now you can see it. See, you see these bands of logs up there? See how dark they are? And look at these logs. And what Bo says is, look, these are smoother, they're dressed better, and as you go up, it looks like it's dressed less, and they were in a hurry. And uh, I told Bo that maybe when they were putting this cabin in, they were fighting the weather, and they were trying to get it up before winter set in, and so... Being in a hurry, they were slapping this thing up. And by the time they got to the top, they did not put the quality in the upper logs that they put in the lower logs. Also, another interesting observation we made is the chimney. The stone chimney is not on the outside. The chimney is on the inside. And I've honestly have never observed that on a cabin unless it was a two-sided cabin and it was an interior chimney when you had two sides to it but this is not a two-sided cabin this is this was made this way and you can clearly see the logs down below are of a different time period or a different kind of logs i mean these are this first level is a poplar 
This is poplar, and that up there is probably red oak, is my guess, but you can see, even though it's higher, and it should be out of the elements like the bottom logs are, that up there looks like it's not weathering as well. Now, isn't that, isn't that interesting? And also, I thought it was kind of interesting that they would dress up the openings like this. Do you see the trim work around the openings, the door, you know, and the window? You know, why would they do that? that that's post-1880s because that's dressed lumber there. And uh, I think this cabin actually post-dates 1880. Um, my... Great grandma was born in 1895. I was told that she was a baby up here. Her husband, Sidney, was born in 1875. He lived down this valley. He was 46 years old when he got killed. And he was raking hay and his team of horses were right, uh, was in front of him and they got spooked. And they reared back and they threw him back into the tines of the hay rake. And when he didn't come home for dinner, my grandma went out to look for him and she found him tied up in that hay rake and he was already dead. And uh, she was only 20, I think she was 26 years old when that happened. So she was a widow with two young girls, my grandma and my great aunt. And so my great grandma, her mother, was a single mother until she remarried when she was 30 years old. And uh, and it was down here. Right down here is where he was killed. And my great aunt, who still lives up here, told me that many, many times they saw a ghost down here in this valley. And like all ghosts, you hear the lady in white, the lady in white dress. But my aunt, my great aunt swears that they have seen a ghost down here of a lady coming down the valley in a white dress. Did that spook the horses? I don't know. They don't know what happened. They don't know if it was snakes or yellow jackets or bees or what. But something happened to spook those horses and it killed my great grandpa. And now you know the rest of the story. Okay, we're going to call it the day here at the house. We're going to walk on down the valley here to the other homestead site. Didn't do real well here. I'm a little disappointed. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty disappointed about it. I had high hopes for this place. And I know my family are probably not going to be very happy either that we could not find anything to date this cabin or of any kind of spectacular find. But everything I dug, I believe I've already shown you. And uh, we're going to walk over there and show you what Chick has found. What I have is I have a rivet here. I have two coins here. This is a 1914 wheat cent. I believe this quarter here is a 1969 25 cent piece. Here's a buckle. I can't tell you how old any of this stuff is. This is all melted lead here. And, uh, and of course you have... This piece here, I don't know what that was to or for, but it looked like it screwed into something. And then this well-used hatchet head. Found a lot of trash. I wanted to show you guys. I didn't show you that dig. But look at that. That's the end of an old dart. And that just shows you you got to be very, very careful when you're sticking your hand in a hole and you're digging it out. You get caught by that, and that could do some serious damage. And, of course, this copper looks like a copper kettle is what that was maybe uh for uh making applesauce all right that's what i found didn't find a whole lot didn't find a lot of great stuff but everything i found at this site at one time belonged to my family it would have been great if we'd found some buttons and buckles but i did find a buckle and i did find some coins so i never got skunked all right let's go over there and let's take a look at what the chick has found all right we're kind of in the dark here because I put everything in here. So the aqua trigger, he came in here and he started digging around, digging around right over here. You can see he's got a silver buckle here. 
a lot of square nails and a lot of junky 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 hey it's not all <laughs> hey you Lots found of junk <laughs> you found a buckle yeah i got a little buckle that's a good a little buckle a little a couple of little odds and ends in there okay. it's all your side so what's not junk the buckle well i got the buckle um hmm. Maybe I had a couple other things, but nothing great. Yeah. I don't think any of this junk at all tells the story of the house. Yeah, it does. You know? Yes. And it's all square nails. You don't see a lot of... I don't see any round nails in there. It's kind of interesting. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Okay, so... So, I said 1880 based upon what we've observed from this house. What's your guess? Sure. Yeah, I'd go with that. Go with that? 